Lots to talk about tonight with Michael Moore, the Oscar-winning documentary filmmaker and who is also a union supporter with deep family ties to the UAW. Uh, Michael, as I just mentioned, Donald Trump says he's skipping this next debate. He's going to go over to Michigan. He's going to deliver a primetime speech in Detroit to an audience of union members. Is this a publicity stunt? Yes, and one that he's hoping uh, that the news media will cooperate with him in, uh, in, in the stunt. It's all it is. I mean, the working people um, of this country, I, I think, understand what Trump did during his four years for the working people, nothing. What he did do was uh, pass one of the largest tax breaks for the rich ever. That's who benefit. That's who benefited when Donald Trump was in the White House. This thing, him going to Detroit, wow. I mean, I just, um, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, maybe it proves he has a weird sense of humor because. Well, uh, He's not going to he's not going to get the support of the auto workers there. Well, so. well, I mean, historically, Trump has had more support, at least among rank and file union members than than perhaps union leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, this was was definitely a factor in the 2016 election, especially. Could people be missing a hidden appeal here? I mean, he's not doing this because he thinks that there's nothing there. Yeah. In 2016, he was a very popular uh, uh, TV show celebrity. Uh, uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, The Apprentice. Uh, it was, you know, it was an interesting and, and uh, entertaining show. And people voted for him. And then they found out what they got from him, which is nothing. And uh, in fact, uh, he destroyed the EPA. Uh, he packed the Supreme Court with people who are going to take the rights of women away. I mean, go on and on and on. So when people had a chance to vote again, they already didn't give him the popular vote the first time. The second time, uh, Biden won in a, in a mini landslide, 7 million votes. So they didn't want Trump. They booted him out. And uh, and, and that's probably what he's facing this time, assuming he's you know not behind bars uh, when the election happens. Uh, but by the way, I, I should mention, one of the things that Trump and a lot of Republicans are trying to say here is that Electric vehicles are the real problem, and they're really pushing that argument as a reason for workers to hold out for more concessions because they believe they are being thrown under the bus in a quote, you know, in their words, an electric vehicle agenda. Do you think that there's a legitimate argument there? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, first of all, there's a whole different discussion you can have about electric vehicles as to what the problems are, but they're not the problems Trump's talking about. Trump is trying to once again scare people, China, China's the enemy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it, this has nothing to do. This is a struggle, this fight, this strike right now over the fact that in uh, 2009, the government under Barack Obama and Joe Biden asked the auto workers to please cut their pay, cut their benefits, cut their pensions, so that uh, uh, GM and, and Chrysler and Ford, but Ford didn't take the federal money. He asked that they cut their money, and and they promised the auto workers that um, th that if you help us, we will reward you for that. You will get this back. It is now almost 15 years later. And any new hire in 2009, thanks to what the UAW at the time agreed to, was making $15.48 an hour. Any of those new hires who hired in in 2009 and any new hire that hired in last year, their paycheck this past Friday was $15.48 an hour, the same amount of money. And here's, here's the thing, Abby. You can only humiliate people for so long. And to humiliate the workers like this, they they – they sacrificed so that these auto companies who who drove themselves into the ground went bankrupt. They said, we will help. We will give all this up. And they said, thank you. We will make sure you get it back. Well, they never got it back. So they have been they have been hoodwinked and and they are they are not going to give up this fight. And in fact, I got to say, I the union has been very generous this week. Uh, they could have shut the whole thing down on Thursday night. They only shut down three factories as a little flare over the bow to let let the car makers know 
that they have the power to crush them. They will shut the whole thing down. And not just 150,000 who of UAW workers who would go on strike. This will shut down thousands of companies, uh, distributors, uh, 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 people who build parts for the auto industry, uh, people who live in the towns around the auto industry. They, this will be uh, catastrophic uh, for the economy. Can I? And they, they are lucky that the UAW is still giving them a few more days to pony up. Can I ask you to just to respond to this from uh, Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott? He was asked today by a voter about how he would respond to the strike. Ronald Reagan gave us a great example when federal employees decided there was a strike. He said, you strike, you're fired. Simple concept to me. To the extent that we could use that once again, absolutely. If wow. you strike, you're fired. Your response? Wow. Uh, how un-American can you get to say something like that? I mean, the, we built the middle class in this country. We, those of us from my family, the auto workers in my family, all the workers around this country, through their strikes, everybody got better pay. They got some time off. They got to go to the doctor. All these things that created the middle class. And the next generation could go to college. And, and, and to praise Ronald Reagan, who kicked off the really the disaster we're still living with when he did completely destroy the air traffic controllers union in 81. It's, it's, uh, why would, I don't know. I'm so sorry that he said that because it's, you know, it, it reminds me, I, I and a bunch of others went to an annual meeting of the shareholders at General Motors many, many years ago. And we stepped up into the microphone and we asked, we're just, you know, do you consider yourselves an American company? And they wouldn't answer the question. Well, would you mind, would you mind anybody on the board of directors of GM who's standing, they're all on the stage. Would you mind uh, standing with us right now and saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America? And no, we will not do that. We are an international global corporation. Well, that's very honest. Thank you for making that clear. The American people need to know that you don't really give a rat's whatever about us. You care about your own pockets. You care, you care about getting wealthier and wealthier. And you're this year alone, you've already made over $21 billion in record profits, the three car companies. So this is all, listen, the people have had it, not just those who work in the car factories, the people who have, who have not seen their wages go up at the rate that they should go up. Uh, that's why they can't handle the, in, the inflation that we had last year. This is and that's um, why we're seeing those strikes, not just here, but also in Hollywood and in other industries as well. At Chipotle. There's, yeah, there, <laughs> there's, there's a lot uh, that is brewing here in this yes. economy. Michael Moore, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abby.